Man, we are so excited about today, Family Day, and uh, we also get to talk uh, about some things in ministry we've been looking forward to. Uh, you know, dedication was the Lord's idea. You know, the, the Jesus uh, had to rebuke his disciples because they didn't understand the Father's heart toward children. You know, I guess they were seeing kids as second-class ministry, and Jesus had to bring correction to them, and their parents were bringing them up for them to, Jesus to touch them and lay hands on them. They were trying to hold them back, but Jesus had to get up in their face and said, y'all let them little children come. That's our future. And these kids are our future, amen? amen. Come on, if we don't pour into them, and if we don't show them where we went wrong, we're, they're destined to make our mistakes. So we can't let that happen. We got to show them the right way. Most important, we got to show them Jesus is the way, Amen. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 11, says, Wisdom is good with an inheritance. You know, the Lord checked me and said, it's not, it's not about the stuff you leave them, it's about the wisdom. If you leave them stuff and don't show them how to use it, you're going to mess them up more than help them. If you leave them a bunch of money and don't let them understand that there's a responsibility for being blessed, you're going to mess them up more than we help them. He said, Wisdom with an inheritance is good. He said, For by it there's profit to those that see the sun. Wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom brings life. Come on, we got to get our kids into the Word and let that Word get into them. Genesis chapter 12. <clears throat> you know, Abraham was chosen not because of, of probably his looks or his talent or his ability. The Word says, I, I know him. He'll train his children and his children's children. He was chosen because he would train them up in the way that they should go. I want that to be said of you and I as well. One of the things they need to know is how to be a steward of the blessing. In Genesis 12, verse 1, it said, The Lord said unto Abram, Come out from your kindred, your country, your father's house, to a place that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to make of you a great nation. He said, I'm going to bless you. That's awesome, isn't it? But that's not where it stops. Because it's not about you and I being blessed. It's not enough just for us to be blessed if we don't know what to do with it. There's always a responsibility for the blessing. Now, we don't need to apologize for the blessing. We don't need to be embarrassed about the blessing. And we don't need to be ashamed of the blessing. But we do need to understand what the blessing is for. He said, I'm going to bless you so you can be a blessing. He said, matter of fact, through you and in you shall all nations of the earth be blessed. You know, we're going to show you in just a minute of uh, some things that God has allowed us to be able to do through your generosity. But before we get into that, go to Mark 14. Mark chapter 14, we see an illustration here of one of the ways we can be a blessing. And it's through uh, a thing called generosity. Mark chapter 14, verse 3, it said Jesus was had a, having a meal. And as he was having this meal, a woman came in with an alabaster box. We understand from doing a little study on this that it was very precious, very expensive. Uh, some scholars say that it was nearly a year's wage. And so she took this alabaster box and she anointed the Lord with this. It said some didn't understand the extravagant gift. Some didn't understand what was taking place. They actually questioned it. Why was this waste made? Why was this waste made? And uh, it said the Lord quickly checked them on this. And he said, Jesus said, leave her alone. Leave her alone. You know, I, one of the things that, that the Lord has checked me on several times as well is, is don't ever judge somebody else's praise. Don't ever judge how somebody responds to the Lord. Because you don't know what's been going on in their life. You don't know what he's brought them out of. You don't know the things they've been dealing with. So how, how can you and I judge anybody for their response to the Lord? And I think that's what was going on here. Why was this extravagant way? This was, this was a waste. But isn't it amazing how we see it as a waste, but God sees it as a praise? So much so that he rebukes those who questioned it, and he spoke over this woman. He said, the poor you will always have, but me you will not. This outsider saw an opportunity to praise God in a way that caused her to be recognized thousands of years after she left this planet. And it was through generosity. And the Lord says the same way. I bless you to be a blessing, not so that you can be seen, but so you know how to create a legacy. You know how to create a legacy that brings him glory. Amen? Come on, that alabaster box is still speaking today. You know, James said, faith without works is dead. It is not enough. To tell somebody, be warmed and filled and send them on the way and not change their situation if you have the ability. 
if you have the ability, if God provides an opportunity. And that's what I, you know, I'm excited to talk about today. Romans 8, I'm just kind of condensing this because I, I know how long this took in the first service. So I don't want, Romans 8 says actually creation is in travail, waiting for the manifestation of sons. So often we think about the manifestation, like Peter and John going to the temple. You know, and they see a guy that's lame, been lame from his mother's womb. They said, silver and gold have I number. What I have I give in the name of Jesus. Rise and walk. And, he, and, and the guy is instantly healed. And that is a manifestation of the sons of God. That's the power of God flowing through ordinary people to change somebody's life. But that's not the only way God moves. Do you realize, you know, we, ha- we have a ministry, and we're going to talk about it in just a minute, where people make food, and every other week they go to the burn unit at the hospital. And when those people are shut in and they are brought a home-cooked meal, that is a manifestation of the sons of God. That is a blessing. When you're in that place, day in, day out, you are far from home, you know, around in a strange environment, you welcome a home-cooked meal. And you don't appreciate how good a home-cooked meal is until you ain't had one in a while. And when somebody comes in that you don't know, why would you do this? It's my ministry. It's my ministry. It's what God called me here to do. See, I don't know about you, but for so long, I saw ministry as just platform. I saw ministry as just podium. You know, maybe a preacher, an evangelist, maybe a, a, a singer or, or an artist. And then the Lord brought a, 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 a correction to me so strong. He said, son, you've been preaching this for wrong for, for a pretty good while. And he said, it's time we can take care of it. I said, what do you mean? He said, you, you call stuff secular. You ever heard that phrase, secular job? You got a secular job? And, and he said, son, you're misrepresenting people because you're not, you're not allowing them to acknowledge that what they're doing is ministry. Yes. Yes. See, and, and if we think we're just doing this to get to that, we're going to miss an opportunity. There's many gifts. And God flows through us in all kind of ways. And he began to say, don't you understand that the people who cook and serve those meals, that's ministry. You know, a, a, a fireman who, who goes out there and, and rushes into a fire when everybody else is running out, that's ministry. That's a call of God. But if you don't understand that, if you don't see that, if you don't acknowledge that, you cause people to feel like they're doing less than what I created for them to do. He said, the only time something is secular is when it's being done for their glory and not mine. Ooh, come on. That woke me up. Creation waits for you and I to just start doing whatever God put us on this planet to do. You can be a car salesman and share the love of God with somebody. You can be a server at a restaurant and share the love of God with somebody. You can be a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker. I don't care what it is as long as you are sharing God wherever you are. Man, and God has allowed us to be able to do some amazing things this year. He said, go into all the world. And I want to share with you just a little bit about what we've been able to do together as a, as a, as a team and as a family. We've got some pictures to show you. They're going to roll some slides. Uh, because we, he said, go into all the world. We go Augusta, South Augusta, and, and a lot of other places on this planet. But one of the ways we partner is with people who are doing things other than what we're doing. Angel House is in uh, India. I think we got some pictures. Hopefully, they're going to be in, in rolling. Yeah, there we go. And uh, Angel House, through, through your generosity, you know, because we, we know to tithe as individuals, but we also tithe as a ministry. Yeah, and a lot of times the question comes up, uh, it may not be to us because usually people don't direct that to us, but they'll kind of whisper, where's the money going? What's going on? You know, we, take a, we take a, uh, try to take at least one Sunday a year to have like a informal uh, state of the union, state of the church, Kind of let you know what you are doing through your generosity. This is one of the ways we're a blessing to others that we might not ever meet this side of heaven. But Angel House, they just celebrated their 10th year anniversary. Glory to God, 10 years. And uh, I'm going to scoot some of this to the side so I can read this. It said, uh, this year they have built their 202nd home. They're getting kids off the street. And uh, they, right now, uh, through these 200 houses, 5,000 children that were abandoned now have homes to live in. 5,000. That's part of, part of what you were able to do this year through your generosity. Now, we don't do it all, but we partner with those who are doing this kind of work. And, uh, and, we, we, and, and you know, one can chase 1,000 to 10,000. So, so when we partner with ministries like this, we can see tremendous things happen, Right. 
uh, they had a, a, a conference in Peru where, where they go in and they do like a, like a blitz. And they had uh, I mean, several thousand volunteers go in, in into uh, the nation of Peru. And it said they filled stadiums and literally touched 1.1 million people in, in that weekend encounter. So that was part of what you were able to do this year. 47 clean water systems installed. And uh, it just goes on and on and on. But I got more to get into. Uh, Maos, which is a ministry in Israel. It's where our first fruits go. It's where your first fruits go. When, when the tithes and offerings come in, first check cut goes right to Israel. Because we believe it's important to sow that first fruit seed in, into where God says to sow it. So they, they have a ministry there which they uh, reach out and touch and, and, and teach and train. And uh, so y'all are a part of that. We also partner with different churches. You know, you've heard me say it before. Uh, hopefully you hear it from more than just me. But there's only two sides in the kingdom. He said you're either gathering or you're scattering. It, it ain't us and them. It ain't us and the Baptists and us and the Methodists or us and them and us. and we're, it's, it's only two things. E- either we're gathering or we're running them off. Where, where do we fall on? You know, that's why we partner with people who are doing ministry. Because it's not about our kingdom. It's about his kingdom. Isn't that what he said? He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It ain't, Father, how can we promote new life? It's, Father, how can we promote Jesus? How can we promote Jesus? Because Jesus said, he didn't say if new life be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up, there'd be a drawing take place. Right up in North Georgia is a tremendous ministry. Jensen Franklin, the free chapel. You ever heard of him? (laughs) Powerful, powerful ministry. Uh, Through through his TV, uh, they they have a potential of 2.3 billion people through their TV and, you know, getting the word out. Now, we we don't have that platform, but we can sow into his. Well, you know, we don't have that ability, but we can sow into him and help him do what he's doing. Amen. So we we all uh, have a share in that. His his youth, which we had a bunch of youth go up there, 13,000 students attended the Forward Conference this year. 900 salvations through that conference. Come on, 900 kids coming out of darkness into light. 900. That's amazing. Uh, They have a feeding program in uh, Haiti. 272,000 meals this year. We were a part of that. Come on, we were a part of that. You know, we didn't do it all, but we had a part. Uh, They have a ministry called New Beginnings, which is uh, bringing young girls who've been in traffic You know, coming out of uh, alcohol and drug addiction. Uh, They have a dream center, which they opened up to women's veterans. And they also have a ministry to, uh, in Israel, for Holocaust survivors. You know, we're we're a part of helping them do that on another level. Uh, We partner with Kenneth Copeland. Uh, We partner with Living Word in Mesa, Arizona. We partner with uh, Victory Ministries International, which is in South Africa. Apostle Jerome, we had him here several years ago. He runs a school, has 50 pastors in it, training up right now to go out into, you know, that area, into that region. We can't do it, so we empower them. We help and equip them so that they can touch their country just like we want to touch ours. You know, we we can't sit back and think that, that that if we don't touch Africa, it's not going to touch us. We can't just be about our own... We can't be an ostrich, whether it be Africa or, or Ken, you know, Kenya is in Africa. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, uh, or Peru or Belize or all these other countries we're going to. If it's, if it's one body, then if we touch them, it's blessing us. So we just try to be everywhere God opens up a door. You know, here at home, and we'll get back into some of the other stuff in a minute, but just in here at home, we partner with TV 49. Now, you, you may or may not watch that, but there's people who depend on it. There's people that that is their, they're, they're shut in, they can't get out. They, that is their life source. You know, we don't have a TV ministry, but we can empower them to be able to do what call them to do. And working together, we can see salvations. You know, we partner with WAFJ, Christian radio station. You know, it's another way to get the word out. We uh, partner with Prophetic Life Ministries, Prophet Ed. How many of y'all have been blessed by his ministry over the years? And uh, a lot of what you see, amen, a lot of what you see today going on is some of the prophetic words that God spoke through him to us years ago. You know, when we were coming out of, uh, my wife and I were kind of very traditional upbringing, and I I didn't even know the prophetic still existed. And it wasn't God's fault, it was my my fault. I didn't get into the word. 
And that's what, that's what the Bible says, my people destroy for lack of knowledge. He said, study to show yourself approved. I got into the Word and began to see, you know, prophets didn't go away. Prophets still exist, just like pastors and evangelists, teachers, you know. But if, if you don't recognize they exist, then you miss an opportunity uh, to be blessed by that kind of a ministry. You know, and God, through his grace, has brought prophet in and some other prophets into our life. And, uh, man, and we were able to see the fruit of that. Another ministry we partnered with is City of Refuge right up in Atlanta. Uh, Bruce Deal was actually raised here, brought up in uh, South Augusta, had a ministry, but God moved on him. And he said, I want you to move to Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, when God moved on Bruce, he was, uh, had still had four young daughters at the time. And, and I didn't know about this. It was kind of revelation to me. Because often we hear about, uh, you know, like Chicago or some of these big cities, right, and, and the murder rates and the things that go on. Uh, but Bruce actually said, the, and it's just like God, the, the zip code that God spoke to him to go to in Atlanta, Georgia, was the deadliest zip code on the East Coast when God told him to move with four young daughters. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. And he said, man, his testimony is amazing. I'm going to try to get him back down here to kind of encourage us, you know, about, the, I mean, just what God is through him and just in his obedience. But now he is, uh, he, he's literally, God through him, I mean, taking Atlanta, Georgia, block by block. I mean, transforming that region. He, he's got a place, again, called City of Refuge. This past year, 485 people got jobs through his vocational training. 485 people off the street. Trained up and landed a good, solid job. Now, we got, we've, we've been up to his ministry several times, and uh, we're, we're actually learning from him. We're gleaning from him because we want to replicate that down here. But until we can have it here, we're sowing into it up there. We're sowing into it up there because you got to sow where you want to go. Amen? Yes. You know, we'll talk about HPSO coming up. We, we definitely have, we got an area already lined out. We've got drawings being worked on and designed so that we can have an automotive center because Bruce partners with Napa. He's got a corporate sponsorship from Napa Auto Center, and that's part of where some of that vocational training comes from. He's also got a full culinary um, cooking school. You know, I don't know about y'all. I know what culinary was, but you say eat, I'm on. I, I got to eat. Yeah, so he got a cooking school, teach him how to cook because I like to eat. But I mean, but every person that comes through his school is already placed before they graduate. That's the kind of reputation he has, and that's what we want to partner with. Yeah. Amen? Because I believe, I believe it brings God glory. When you take somebody and give them a skill set, it ain't enough to hand somebody a fish. We got to teach them how to fish. We got, we got God, God, God wants to flow through us to get people and, 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 and tell them what we kind of sometimes maybe take for granted. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. The world may have given up on you, but God never will. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. You're, you're a child of God waiting to, waiting to find out why you were born. You know, and, and the privilege we have to be able to point somebody in that direction is amazing. Is amazing. So we, we partnered with him to be able to do such things. He has a, a, a place where he has women that are coming in and uh, to get them out of poverty and, and sex trafficking and things of that nature. In addition to the 485 that got jobs, 455 women and children he houses on a regular basis to get them out of the streets right up here in Atlanta. And uh, 350,000 meals he served this year. Right here at home, under the bridge ministry. How many of y'all know Roger Gardner? Several of you do. If, you, if you're bored, we can, we, can, we can take care of that. If you're looking for a place to minister, if you're, minister, if you're looking for a place to serve, you, know, you don't have to have a, a, a background in theology. If you can hand somebody a meal, we got something for you to do. If you can hand somebody a Bible, we got something for you to do. If you can hand somebody a hygiene pack with just deodorant and toothbrush, we got something for you to do. If you're bored, it is not our fault. But right here under the bridge with our Brother Roger, we partnered with him for many, many, many years, hold services every week right down under Calhoun Expressway. Sometimes people can't. You have to understand, you can't, we can't just as a church expect people to come where we are. We got to go where they are. Amen. Amen. You got to be willing to do whatever God says when he says it. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's it. And if he says go down there and hold a service, that's what Bruce has been doing for years and years and years. Last year served 8,500 hot meals right down under that bridge. 8,500 hot meals. Gave out 10,000 bags of food. 
gave out 12,000 articles of clothing, 600 coats, and 1,000 toys at Christmas time. Come on, that is right here at home. And we've been a partner with him for many, many years. Uh, right through, uh, uh, we have a partner with uh, International Ministries called A Better Belize. Uh, we partner with them right out of home. They have a 100-bed camp that houses, uh, that people go in, and, and these, are, these are great, 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 great short-term mission trips. You know, you, you might not be up for an Africa trip just yet. It takes a little doing. Just, to, just sometimes the, the plane flight alone is, is, you know, 17 hours one way, and, and the expense and such. So if, if you want to get your feet wet and, and, and maybe feel like God's calling you to a different nation, you want to kind of test the waters out, Belize is a good place. Peru is a good place. Like I said, if, you, if, you, if you're bored, it ain't our fault. We, we got places we can help you get if you feel God leading you that way. If not, don't go. The last place you want to be is somewhere God didn't call you to. I said the last place on this planet you want to be is somewhere God ain't called you to. But the place you need to be is where he says to be. Whether it's here or 8,000 miles from here. I've had people come up. We, I don't know if y'all have heard, but one of the biggest revivals going on on this planet right now is in Iran. Iran. Man, who would go there? People God calls. Because you're more, the, the, the safest place to be on this planet is in the will of God. Because if God calls you to Iran, and if you're a Jonah wanting to run, you could probably expect a fish. Headed your way. Yeah, let that sink in for a minute. So we partner with Better Belize. They, they have a place where they're training leaders and bringing them up. I said, if you, if you have a desire to go there, we will definitely set you up. Uh, John Smithwick, he, he's out of uh, Midwest. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. He's in Thailand, Honduras, Bangladesh, and the Philippines. We partnered with John, and uh, he had a just... Uh, just last year alone, 198,000 salvations through his crusades. 198,000. See, and you might not have been the one that actually directly led somebody to Jesus, but one plants, another waters. God gives the increase. So you had a part in somebody coming to know Jesus, whether you actually said the prayer or not, because through you, people were sent. Through you, people heard the good news that might not have heard it any other way. Yes. Amen? So we're a part of that. Also, and uh, 323 water filtration systems, you know, because God moved on him to be able to do that as well. Uh, in Thailand, we partnered with uh, Charlie and Kathy. Uh, they have a ministry called Living Word International. 700 orphans they take care of on a daily basis. That's through, you know, through partners like you and I. We partnered with them to do what we wouldn't normally be able to do. This year, they built two new dorms, and they had a two -story, uh, another two-story dorm they're working on. You know, when you're feeding 700 kids, that's a whole lot of food. That's a whole lot of food. You don't just carry that by hand, amen? So they, they were, God blessed them, and they were able to buy two trucks. You know, and that might not mean enough, a lot to us because you ain't feeding 700 kids. But if you're feeding 700 kids, you need trucks. I remember, you know, my, I, we, my wife and I just had one son, but when he had his friends come over, I've seen what they can do to a pantry. <laughs> I mean, they go through a pantry like one of them Bible plagues. I mean, it's like, they, ain't not, they stripped the last leaf off. Of, I, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You guys still got, yeah, you know. So you can imagine, multiply that by 700. So you appreciate when God blesses you with the ability to buy two trucks. We're a part of that. They, they had a, actually, this year was a record year for them. They built 18 new churches. Glory to God. Uh, in, the, in the Africa region, uh, this year, there's a called the Ministry Church International. 47,000 people came to Jesus. Ten pastors joined in just Kenya alone. In the, uh, during this past year, 28 pastors from Nigeria were launched out into those, into those regions. In Ghana, they had five more. Come on, this is how you change the world. And, and, and it, it, it's not enough, again, just for you and I to be blessed. If we don't change this world and make it better for our kids, this is how we do it. One soul at a time. One person at a time. One life at a time. You realize Goliath would have not been there for David 
had the forefathers slayed what they were supposed to do? I don't want us leaving any giants for our kids. They're going to have enough battles on their own without having to fight what we wouldn't face. This is how we face it. This is part of what God has called us to do. Changing our world and making it a better place, not just for us, but for our children and our children's children. You know, several years ago, God allowed us to go to Kenya. And while we were in Kenya, uh, they was in one of the worst droughts they'd ever had. And, uh, you know, he just began to stir in our spirit about uh, doing something about that situation. And I said, well, we can sponsor a well. You know, I, I've heard about that, you know, different people drilling wells and things like that. God said, why don't you believe me for bigger? I said, okay, what you got in mind? He said, why don't you believe me for a drilling truck? We did and he did. Through your generosity, God allowed us to purchase a quarter of a million dollar drilling rig. It's been drilling wells in Kenya ever since. That's it. We call it Big Red. Had to get some work done on it this year. We rebuilt the engine, rebuilt the drive motors on the top of the drilling rig, which, I mean, didn't mean a lot to y'all. I learned a lot about drilling over the past few years. Did, didn't know there was such a complex thing. I just, man, you just go out there and drill a hole in the ground. Whoa, what's up? You know, didn't realize that, you know, here we got, and they probably, I don't know, some of y'all may get it, some of y'all don't. So it, it depends on the type of soil you're going through is the kind of rig you need. You know, when we first purchased a drilling rig, we bought one here, thought we'd ship it over there. What we got was so inadequate, it would have been a joke. God knew that, but he allowed that path to lead us to Mike and Tammy, who actually run the truck for us now, because it's amazing how yeah, all you have to walk and God will direct. All you have to do is take those steps, just take them by faith. You might not even know why you're doing what you're doing, but if you trust God, he can cause even a mistake to work out good. You know, so we bought a wrong truck thinking it was the right truck, but through that wrong truck, now we got a right truck and we got the people to run the truck because we bought a truck that was good for our soil but wasn't good for the soil in Kenya. Yeah. But now we got a truck, the, the deepest we've gone so far, we had to get an additional air compressor, but went 1,000 feet through solid rock. 1,000 feet to get people water who wouldn't have had it any other way. That's part of what y'all did. It's part of what we do. This year, from February to June, they were putting, they put five wells in. Changed five different villages. Each, each, each well provides for over 500 families. Now, see, we don't think about that a lot because we can walk right into the lobby, get a drink from the water fountain. Pastor Alley, I, I got one sitting right up here on stage with me. But when you have to walk three or four miles to get this little bit, a well changes your life. A well changes your life, brings industry to the region so they can have farming and, and, and irrigation and things of that nature. So when you got people running up to you in heaven saying thank you, you'll know why. Something else we've been able to do this year, and uh, we're starting this year uh, actually. Uh, you know how God will lead you uh, in a direction, and, and you know it's where you want to go, but you sense the time is not just right? But then things start to line up. And you say, you know you're getting closer, and you know you're getting closer, and then you start to get more excitement because you feel like you're right there at it. Well, this year God did it. We've been wanting a school for a good while and just waiting on God to give us the liberty to do it and the right people to put it together. And uh, Pastor Philip been working really hard with uh, Darren this year. And so this year we have now uh, got things set up where starting in September we will be able to have from here a, a uh, fully accredited Bible school. They've been working, I mean, it's, uh, and, and, and I mean, I'm talking about the favor of God. You know, this one of the scriptures, grow in wisdom and stature and favor with God and favor with man. I'm talking about favor on another level God did for us because we, were, we have been accredited through the same agency that accredits Rama Bible Training Center and Christ for the nations. We're going to be able to offer, uh, and this is just starting because we want to build on this, but you got to start somewhere. Uh, but the first year will be a certificate uh, of ministry and theology. The second year we'll be able to give an associate's degree. And the third year will be a bachelor's. 
So if you don't have to go all over the world anymore, we can do it right here at home if you have that desire. So uh, come on, let's give God praise for that. That is, we are super excited. And uh, don't think it's going to be no easy run. This is, I mean, it's a real deal, full-on accredited homework, assignments, ain't no cutting corners, school. Right? So just go, you know, just go ahead and clear that up. It's like, hey, man, I, I got some stuff going on. I need to, I need to skip. Man, yeah, I ain't no cutting corners in this. Amen? Amen. Uh-uh. You might, that might work in high school, but it ain't going to work in high school. <laughs> uh, uh, like I said, Power, Pastor Terry uh, ministers in Peru. We have opportunities to go that direction as well. Back here at home, uh, Augusta Rescue Mission. Uh, we've been partners with them for many, many years. Uh, it's, it's just a place where guys can come in off the street, have a, have a bed and a, and a hot meal, and, and, and afford them a place to come in and hear the Word of God. But we partner with them. Uh, let's see. Augusta Care Pregnancy Center, another one we've been partnering with for a long time. Uh, I think most of y'all are probably familiar with it. Last year, uh, 1,300 people came in through their parenting classes, crisis counseling, sonograms, and so forth. But the, but the big one I want to highlight here, 83 moms chose life. I mean, they were coming in, had their mind set, but, and, and, and God intervened. 83 lives forever changed. Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, another big breakthrough for us this year, as I said, was uh, our HPSO on Gordon Highway. How many of y'all had an opportunity to go by and see it? I think we got some pictures maybe. This is uh, the food and clothes setting up. And uh, I want to give our volunteers a hand because that's just <laughs> phenomenal what they've done. I mean, uh, just, uh, just on a whole nother level, just phenomenal. Over 7,000 volunteer hours this year at HPSO. And uh, like I said, you don't, have to, you don't have to have a theology degree. If you can put clothes on a hanger, if you can size them, if you can hand somebody something, we got a place for you to minister. And, uh, you know, and those kind of things. You know, like I, the, the Romans said the world is in travail. Creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of sons. You know, and it might not be that miracle at the gate. It might be handing somebody a jacket in the wintertime. But when that opportunity comes and they say, why are you doing this? It's because God's blessed me to be a blessing. And you get to pray with somebody and have an opportunity to introduce them to Jesus. And they have an opportunity for their life to be forever changed. Your life will never be the same. This year we served over 1,300 people. Gave away 15,900 shirts. Thank God, Eric. Thank God for the number crunchers. Amen. 10,000 pair of pants. 2,000 pairs of shoes. I mean, it goes on and on and on right here at HPSO. Like I said, this coming year, we have uh, the designs in place or, or uh, they're working on right now uh, for the automotive center to be set up. We're going to be expanding our food and our clothing this year. Uh, for us as a, as a ministry, uh, how many of y'all know we got 100 acres in Jefferson County? We want to have our own camp. Uh, if you don't know, if you're the first time here, we got some pictures. That we, every year we send kids to camp or we, we raise money. Uh, but when you send kids to camp, you know, you, you don't set the fee they do because it's their camp. And again, that's where God kept, stepped in. He challenged He said, why don't you believe me for your own camp? And uh, I said, well, I don't have nothing about running no camp. But it ain't a, it, it, it's not about what I want. It's what does he want. And, and, and I said, well, okay, God, I, I, you know, it took a minute, but I kind of got on board. And then when I got on board, God moved in. Somebody gave us 100 acres, free and clear, 100 acres. How, who does that, right? But we... It, I say that because it's, it's not who we knew as far as people is trusting God. You, somebody in human, you might be believing for a house. If God will give us 100 acres, he can give you a house. He ain't no respecter of persons. I know that's not good English, but y'all with me, right? He is not a respecter of persons, brothers. He can do it for you. It's can you believe. It, it's never been about his ability. It's about our belief. He said all things are possible if we can believe. So we just put our faith out there. And we didn't know how God was going to do it. But uh, one of the things, I am so logically minded sometimes that, that it opposes my faith. I don't know if any of y'all feel the same way. You know, I, I, I like science. I like math. I like to see it. I, I want to know why it works, how it works. I want to know the inside and the outside. And that is not very effective when it comes to faith. 
And I've had to learn how to set logic to the side so that I can believe the unbelievable. It's not logical to step out of a boat in the middle of a storm. But it is faithful if God called you to walk on water. God, uh, get, believing for a camp was, was walking on water. But when we put our faith out, God, God met us at that point of contact. Well, Pastor Allen was down there this week. We're going to start cutting grass because I believe in a few months we're going to break ground on the camp. Glory to God. Just, at the, just at the, right at the close of last year, and you, and you know how I say, you know, you sense things are God's kind of ramping it up, kind of ramping it up, and you feel the excitement coming, you feel the excitement coming. Well, right at the end of last year, coming into the first of this year, $50,000 came in for the camp. Wow. Wow. So I said, okay, okay. You know, I might not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I can feel it ramping up. Uh, so uh, Pastor Alley and Logan would go, go down there and cut the, you know, because we had all the trees cleared, the whole 20, well, it's 25 acres. That's phase one of the whole thing. I think we got to pick, can y'all put the camp back up for me for a second? Oh, well, yeah, this is what happened. Uh, they got stuck. <laughs> yeah, that 25 acres, we had a lot of rain, y'all. And uh, they said, well, it's sandy. Let's go. Yeah, they got real stuck. I mean, that's, I, I mean, I'm talking about bog to the gills. That don't, that's too country for some of y'all. Uh, but uh, thank God he got a bigger tractor, right? That's all I got. Uh, you know, that big old John Deere, because I mean, they was like stuck, y'all. I mean, like, I mean, and, uh, but before you realize you got a problem, God's already got a fix. See, now, y'all might not be as excited about seeing a John Deere roll up because you wasn't stuck. But to the ones who were stuck, that John Deere looked real good. You know, and I, and I shared that in the first service, and the Lord said, you need to back up, son, because whether we realize it or not, we was all stuck. We was all in a mess over our head. We was all in a mess we couldn't get ourselves out of. Thank God he rolled up with a big old John Deere and drug us out of that stuff. Amen? Come on. He said he caused all things. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed. I, 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 don't know what, I don't know what your stuff looked like, but I know what my stuff looked like. And I'm so glad he rolled up with something big enough to get me out. His name is Jesus. This year for New Life, we had 144 new people come in and say, we want to be a part of what you're doing. God's growing this ministry. In Zambia, he gave us 100 acres. He's opening up more and more doors. More and more. It's, uh, we, had, we had had some uh, plans in effect and uh, left some money. But in Zambia, uh, just this past week, uh, Linnell sent us and said, we've got things organizi or organized. <laughs> we might use that later on. we got some things organized. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, but started a feeding program this week in, in one of the little villages. 100 kids every day now getting a hot meal because of you. I think we got some pictures up. And, uh, you know, again, that, that might not mean as much to us because we can go to pantry pretty much any day of the week and open up and got a selection. But when you don't have a choice, anything at all makes a difference. Creation's groaning, waiting for the manifestation of sons. It's waiting for us to realize we're blessed to be a blessing. Now, God's not calling us to give it all away. He said he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And he multiplies the seed sown. You know, I found that if the devil can't stop something, he'll try to drive it out of, drive it out of, uh, out of whack. Whack is a spiritual term. If you, if you, ever, you know, if you're raised in the South, you know what a whack is. Uh, if he can't stop it from going, he'll try to drive it out of control. I, I, I've seen people that, like I said, seed to the sower, bread to the eater, multiply the seed sown. Sometimes we get so excited about giving, we start giving away our bread at the expense of our children suffering. God doesn't want that. That's why every time we're blessed, we take it to the Lord. Lord, is this my seed? Is this my bread? What do I need to do with this? As long as we are spirit-led in everything we do, we'll never make a mistake. We'll never make a mistake. But through your generosity, the lives of people all over this planet are being changed. Just in our youth, 135 went to camp. In, the, in that impact of a week in camp, their lives will never be the same. We got uh, uh, young adults called Refocus. They go out and they, they, a lot of them go on the streets and minister. 
appreciate y'all doing that. It's a blessing when they go out and do that. Just God laid it on their hearts. But this year, just at Christmas time, they gave 100 homeless uh, hygiene bags and, and, and just touched their life in, in a way uh, that, that showed them God in a way that he, they might not have seen it in, in any other fashion. North Augusta campus, we got paid in full. You know, when we were, uh, and, and, the, and the amazing thing is, you know, when we, when we started this, you know, 25 years ago, we had no idea that, that New Life was going to look like it does today. Matter of fact, if I'd have known then what I know now, I'd probably still be running. Because <laughs> this was so far off my radar. So far off what I ever thought I would be doing. You know, my background was engineering. I, I, I had one thing laid out for my life, but God had something completely different. And uh, so through, through just uh, us uh, endeavoring to say yes to God, you know, now we have Central Campus and here at Gateway. And then, you know, we opened up North Augusta a few years, a couple of years ago. And, uh, but it's like God threw that seed of North Augusta. That, I mean, they've already outgrown the building. And so we have plans in design right now for a phase two expansion at North Augusta. Thank God. I mean, it's, uh, he's bringing more laborers in. Uh, you know, we could go on and on and on, but I, I know time's getting on. But uh, don't even have a count of the flowers that we sent to people in the hospital. And, you know, when people had babies and things of that nature. And, again, the cooking and, and the team that brings in the meals. And we call it the meal train or the meals on wheels. And, uh, but all these things are so necessary and so important. And I'm so glad that you see the importance of them. Because it's through you that these lives are being changed. It's through your yes that we're changing our world. And I believe, we're, I, I absolutely believe we're leaving our children a better place to live. Yeah. Creation's waiting. Let's don't let them wait on us. Let's stand. Father, we love you. Lord, we praise you. God, it is so humbling the things that you do through us. Lord, we just so appreciate your goodness. God, I pray that every single one of us would realize that our worst day is still somebody's miracle. Our, even our worst day would still be somebody's blessing. I pray that we don't ever take, Lord, what you've given us for granted. God, that we would always have that grateful heart. You have been so, so good to us. And I pray, Father God, that we would not miss an opportunity to be your hand extended to somebody else God that we would never be in too big a hurry to not see somebody as important to not stop and allow you to flow through us to somebody that's in need God, I thank you for the generosity of this house. God, I thank you for the privilege of pastoring what I truly believe is one of the greatest groups of people I have ever known. God, I'm asking you to bless these people beyond anything they've ever seen. Because, Lord, I know their desire to give. I know there are so many. Lord, that they want to do more. So I'm asking you to pour out exceeding, abundant, above and beyond. God, I'm asking you literally to open up heaven's floodgates. Pour it out beyond, Lord, beyond anything we've ever seen, known, or heard about. God, we want to leave this world a better place for our children. God, I don't want to leave any giants left because we didn't want to face them. pray that you would find an obedient heart in every single one of us. You're not looking for our talent. You're not looking for our ability. 
You're looking for our heart. Lord, and I pray that our response is here am I use me however you desire however you desire God I'm here and I am available God if it's cooking a meal or handing somebody a jacket or telling them about Jesus whatever it is I'm here use me creation is waiting for us to step into that yes I'm just going to ask just if we could heads bowed and eyes closed you know God's calling you to more I'm just going to ask you just say just by just by raising your hands just say Lord here am I Lord I, I I'm ready I'm ready for more I'm ready to be used by you now make myself available in in however you choose if you just raise your hands I I, I just believe it's an act of surrender I believe God wants to wants to launch some things. I believe there's new ministry being birthed today. I believe there's new dreams and vision being released today. When you give him your yes, he's going to open up doors beyond anything you've ever known. Father, you see these hands. I ask heaven to record today. Lord, I'm asking you to open up doors that have been shut up till now. God, I'm asking you to remove all hindrances. Remove all doubt and fear in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, Lord, for those who've been like me and trying to figure it out, God, that you just give us the ability to walk it out. God, if we'll walk it out, you'll set it up. God, if we'll say yes, Lord, you'll cause it to come about. Father, I thank you for fulfillment. An abundance of life that we have never experienced before. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate you being here. Woo. I don't believe we've seen anything yet of what God is going to do. Amen. Thanks for joining us today on the New Life Everyday YouTube channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to receive the latest messages from Pastor Brian and the New Life team. If you enjoyed today's message, be sure to share this video with a friend. To learn more about us, visit our website, newlifeeveryday.com. Again, thanks for watching. God bless.